This is the plaintiff, Kyle Crane. He says the defendant's his girlfriend's sister. And while his ducks, Benny and Daisy, were staying at her mother's house, they were attacked by her dog. He's here suing for the $2,500 he feels he's owed for medical supplies and emotional distress. This is the defendant, Kira Freeman. She says her mother was watching the ducks, and one of the dogs got out and attacked the ducks. This lawsuit's crazy because the plaintiff abandoned those ducks, and now he's all up in arms about their well-being. Police. She's accused of getting daffy over a duck. All parties, please raise your right hands. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Menendez is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Mr. Crane, you are suing your girlfriend's sister for $2,500 in pain and suffering and medical care because according to you, something happened that was her fault. Tell me what happened. The, the story begins, uh, uh, my girlfriend and I had were bouncing around places to live and we were uh, vacated from where we had uh, the ducks in the first place. And mind you, I've had these ducks since they were little. And so- How long uh, have you had the ducks? About a year and a half. So they were full grown. Okay. So uh, anyway, Christy and I, which is her her sister, we were trying to find a place that we could uh, keep the ducks while we were moving uh, into a m- mobile home. And uh, she said, oh, well, my, my mom will keep them. She's had chickens before. So I said, okay, that's great. So uh, they live in Yuma. Okay, and how far away is that from you? About a two hour drive. And she visits frequently. And she agreed to take the ducks? Yes. And when yes. is it that you gave her the ducks? Probably about five, five months ago. All right, and is your testimony that she was holding the ducks for you until what? Yes, until we could find a place to, uh, you know, have them. I thought that uh, you had just moved into a mobile park that doesn't allow ducks. So w- what what are you saying, that that was a temporary place? I don't know what you're saying, because well, it doesn't yeah, look like you're taking temporary. back the ducks anytime soon, because it's been a year and you didn't take the ducks back, right? Right, but okay. it, it, her mother had, had agreed that she that she enjoyed And how many animals did mom have there? Probably like four or five. What kind of animals were there? Dogs. Dogs. All right. So what happens? The dogs that lived with the mother uh, were completely friendly, you know, never showed any signs of violence or, you know, you know, animal, you know, attacking. Uh, And then I even told uh, her mother that because I had been informed that Kira was going to be moving back in and that the dogs. Into where? Into into her mother's house? Into her mother's house. Okay. And and I and that the dog had that her dog had previously attacked and killed her chickens. Whose chickens? And so, her mother's chickens. Okay. And so uh, I said to her mother, I said, "Well, when when you get the dog, please let me know, and I will come get my ducks because okay. I don't want them to fall into the same fate." And I never received that call. And uh, the recall that we did receive was that, "Oh, the dog's here, and it attacked your ducks, and one's dead." And the other one. Is, Who gave you that call? Who called you to tell you that? I did, I wasn't called. Christy, my, my girlfriend. Who called, called Christy? Where is Christy testifying today or no? No, she's not. Well, did Christy say to her mother, Ma, you, we were supposed to pick up the ducks. What were you going to do with the ducks if you picked them up? Uh, I was going to put them, find a place for them. All right. So did your girlfriend say, but mom, you were going to call and tell me when the dog was coming? Uh, yeah, she did. And what did her, her mother tell her? <laughs> she had just forgotten. I guess. How is your relationship with Ms. Freeman before this? I would say mutual, fine, uh, no discrepancies. Tell me how you described her here, because I, I think that's kind of interesting and telling. Oh, uh, I just she she's the youngest of you know uh, like eight or nine or. Okay. And according to you, she was least parented and is a very negligent, lazy person who is quick to be irrational and negative. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. Ms. Uh, yeah. Freeman, what's going on? What's the deal with your dog? What was your dog doing there and what ended up happening? Okay. So um, we got kicked out of our home and we had to move and we ended up moving into a one bedroom. So I asked my mom if she could keep the dog until we can get a bigger place. Okay. And she said, that's fine. 
And so we did the mom, did, did, did and, mom ever tell you what, you know, I got the ducks here. Or you already knew the ducks were there. Yeah. I knew the ducks were there. Had your dog eaten said, the chickens previously? Yes. If you know that your dog, dog, if you know that your dog had eaten the chickens previously, how is this a great idea to put the dog near the ducks? Like, shouldn't they have been separated and some other arrangements for the ducks or the dog been made by you or your sister? So my mom was going to, because we had the chicken coop still. So my mom said she was going to put the ducks away every night. You know, during the day she could supervise them. And at night she was going to put them in the coop and she was sick. That week she was dizzy and she wasn't feeling that well. And that night she forgot to put them in there. And I mean, it happened. I didn't right. How did you find out it happened? My mom texted me and said that Kyle's going to come kill my dog because the chickens are dead. The ducks. And, and so did you sorry, the ducks. Did you call your mom or say to her mom, you were supposed to put the, the ducks away in the coops? I told her, I said, well, why didn't you put them away? And she said, I must have forgot. I was so tired at night. And, and I know. That Maybe you all should stop getting pets you can't take care of. How about that? How about everybody stops dumping on poor old mom and dumping their, their animals that they don't have room for or an ability to care? How about that? How about maybe mom needs to enjoy the twilight of her life? <laughs> and uh, y'all, because you're both doing the same thing to her. Both of you are dumping your pets there while you're, it's one thing like in a bind, I understand, but it's a year. Mr. Crane, and it's one thing um, in a bind, I understand, but it's a dog that's eating the chickens and there's two ducks there. So it's, you know, come on. So what ends up happening is both ducks are attacked, one is killed, the other one you nurse back to health, correct? Yes. All right, this is the mallard and what, wow, that's a yeah. beautiful mallard. What, what's the name of yeah, the mallard? Yeah, he is, that's Benny. And this is bandages on Benny? Yeah. That was after uh, the wounds had been cleaned. Ugh. That was kind of the tears in his back. Ugh. You never took the, the mallard to the vet, though? No. No, you took care of it yourself. We, we, All right. Yeah, Christy is a, a vet was a vet assistant and stuff like that. So she's oh, like, okay. it's going to cost a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, a couple of weeks go by and we are able to uh, make This is a video of here. Daisy. This is the one that was killed. Yes. Yeah, she's beautiful, too. She is beautiful. I'm sorry that this happened. Um, I am too. Can I uh, ask you a question? What did you ever speak with Kyra and say to her, "What are you gonna? I want to be recompensed for my loss or something." Or you two couldn't speak to each other? Um, I I did. I spoke through Christy. I said, "Could you? You know, is there any way she could maybe you know fork over some medical costs or whatever?" And she just kind of laughed and. I won't, I won't get into the logistics of oh, it. Oh, but, but I you know, will. I will. Said no. What was it you said, Ms. Freeman, when he asked you to kick in some of the medical costs? Can't even prove that it was exactly my dog in the first place. Well, nothing happened until your dog got there, sweet pea, and your dog ate the chicken, so I'm pretty much ready to rule on that issue. When, in fact, your mother when, said it told you it was your dog, right? When the chickens got killed, my niece's dog was actually there as well. So it was there then. It wasn't proof that Athena did it. It could have been the other dog as well. What so are your now, exact words when uh, your sister asks if you can help out? No. Well, that's, that's not exactly. Your exact words are, tell Kyle he can blank my blank. Gosh, I can't imagine that that would be my reaction. I would still at least feel bad that this happened. Why would that be your answer to your sister? As opposed to, you know, those, and, and your sister says to you, oh, geez, Kyra, those ducks meant the world to him. And your answer is then why did he leave them? He knew he didn't have space for them. Oh yeah, that kind of sounds like you. So mom already said he wanted ducks, but when they grew up, he wants to send them off and he doesn't pay for food or visit or take care of them. Athena was probably just playing. She doesn't know better. Me and mom punished her for it. I don't know. It kind of sounds like you know Athena did it. And your sister says, rightfully, just like you don't have space for your stuff. Don't be blanking at me when you're having the same problem as me. I live in a trailer too, you know. Ducks are easier to handle and mom loves it compared to dog. Where's mom in all this? What does mom say about all this? Because it's mom who forgot to put the ducks. I mean, I can't imagine mom has the time to stare at everybody all day long and watch them. She's too busy taking care of our animals. What are the other animals she's taking care of? 
just my dog. And then she always has Christie's dogs there. Okay. And what other animals does she have? Is she a farmer? My mom, no. Oh, okay. So are there any other animals but the ones you guys dump on her? Um, right. My sister why has are cats. You more, why, aren't, why don't you feel bad? Like, what is the deal? I, I, which is I totally, do feel bad. I do just, you? Because your response to your sister isn't, hey, listen, I feel bad. But the truth of the matter is you abandoned them there a year ago. And they're really mom's ducks. And I have the same problem you have. And blah, like that, that's the response I expect. I don't expect, tell Kyle he can blank my blank body part that you don't have. I don't expect you to say that to him, and I'm just kind of wondering why. Mr. Crane, did you two not get along, or no? That's just the way she talks or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it goes hand in hand. I think that I was just never was understood as because I live in Phoenix. I mean, so, you know, they it's always back and forth. I'm the boyfriend of the, the Mormon daughter, you know, and it, it, yeah, this, Are you Mormon, they, I, they never or are you not Mormon? Me? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. So is that what you're trying to say right now, that you don't feel accepted by the family because you, you don't share her religion? No, just, 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 I, I guess that uh, I've had, I've had a checkered past in my life that okay. I've, you know, I've, I've, I've taken full responsibility for. Okay. So I've how is, I, I know that there's a lot of pain and suffering when you lose a pet, but pet are, pets are considered in the eyes of the law property. Um, so you can't really sue for pain and suffering because imagine how are we going to compare, how are judges going to compare what your suffering of your pet is versus someone else's suffering of their pet. And it just doesn't work that way. They're considered property. So what you would be entitled to is to be reimbursed for the actual loss of a duck, which means the, the cost of a duck, which is an adult duck that is how old? Year and a half. Yeah, year and a half old. So it's not a baby duck. It's an adult duck that's a year and a half old. Mm. That's the that's the measure of your damages. It would never be two thousand five hundred dollars. It would be I don't know what. Right. Let's assume no it's idea. fifty bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever it is. But in order to get that money, you would have to be able to prove that Miss Freeman was negligent or that Miss Freeman knew that her animal had a propensity for viciousness and allowed it to be around your animals. Now, what the law does is it requires the humans to be responsible. So if a human knows that their dog has a, propen uh, a propensity for viciousness, it's called in the eyes of the law, and she does, because she knows that the dog ate the chickens, then she has a responsibility if the ducks and the, and the dog are in her care to make sure they stay separate. The problem that we have here are two problems. She's claiming, well, they're not even his ducks. He abandoned them a year ago. There's no doubt in my mind that you consider these your ducks. No doubt in my mind, because you've taken this very hard and you're very upset. And they're obviously, they're not ducks you abandoned. Uh, your arrangement with your girlfriend's mom is truly none of Miss Freeman's business. That's between you and the mom. And she doesn't get to decide if they're your ducks. And I find that they're your ducks. But when... We have a situation that the person you entrusted the ducks to makes a mistake and doesn't put, doesn't keep all the animals she's, you know, harboring separated, particularly an animal that she knows ate her chickens. How would that be Miss Freeman's fault? You would have to live in a state that has strict liability under these circumstances, and you don't. And no state that I know of has strict liability when someone else is in care and custody of the dog, um, you know, because she, she doesn't have the dog. She's given the dog to her mom while she's in a housing crisis. So her mom is the, the true and one caretaker of the dog and the ducks. And it's overwhelming to her apparently because she was overwhelmed this day and it's horrible. It's mm -hmm. one of those things that happens in nature. It is. And it's, it's horrible, but at the end of the day, I would have to find that she was negligent, Miss Freeman was negligent in not keeping them separate. And I can't do that because Miss Freeman wasn't in control of any of the animals. It was your girlfriend's mom. So based on the facts that I've seen in front of me, I certainly think that morally she should be a little more polite and contrite and decent, but I cannot find her legally liable to you. So my verdict in this case That's is for the defendant. I know that you're mad. I know. Uh, verdict for the defendant. Just, yeah. Okay. 
Ms. Crane, the judge uh, really picked you apart for being crude, kind of cold and uncaring. Is that really what you're like? Are you that kind of a person? Because you come across that way. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Well, I'm sorry, but that's the impression you give to everybody who's seeing this. And, and it's kind of, I guess it's unfortunate. But in any event, you are the victor. So congratulations there. I guess you're lucky from that point of view. All right. Uh, <laughs> anything you want to add? Want to say anything in your behalf? Well, I truly, I truly am sorry that the ducks, that happened to the ducks, but it happens. I'm sorry. All right, let's go to Mr. Crane, the plaintiff now. Mr. Crane, as the judge announced her verdict, you said something to her or wanted to. What, what did you want to say to her? I know you were upset that you lost, but what were you saying? Uh, I'm not upset that, that I lost. It's, it's that I wanted her to have a little bit of taste of reality of the adult world and to see, like, you know, you can't just tell people to, S, you know, suck whatever when, when your dog eats my ducks. Like, I love those ducks. So, obviously, he's very upset about it. They were his pets and his friends. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, he simply could not prevail under the laws of the state. So he was asking for $2,500. And unfortunately, he did not get it. Harvey, how do you feel about it? You know, Doug, it could have been a different situation if the dog bit a human. In many states, there is strict liability on the part of the dog owner, which means it doesn't matter who is in control of the dog. If a human gets bit, the dog owner is responsible. Here, there are animals that were bitten. And that's not the standard. The standard is negligence. And the negligence would be on the defendant's mother. And that's why the plaintiff sued the wrong person and lost. I had a landscaping company install a dry well in 2019, but it has been causing issues. And I come to find out that it was installed incorrectly. They have ignored my calls and emails to get in contact with them. Am I still able to take them to court to sue? I'm located in Putnam County, New York. Thanks for your help. This person is seeking to sue for something that happened in 2019, the installation of this dry well. So the good news is- What's a dry well? A dry well is something you, you build underground to handle rainwater and other runoff and, and, and surface water that's gonna flood in your yard or in a, in a lot somewhere uh, and that sort of thing. And, and they, they can cost a few thousand dollars to put in uh, typically. Uh, but in this case, because the statute of limitations on a contract claim in New York is six years and the statute of limitations for a, a claim outside of contract law for a tort for damage to personal property Property, for example, that would be three years. Either way, Either way he's good. still within the realm of, uh, of being able to proceed on the lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, maybe they should have returned his phone calls. I don't know. Or yeah, nothing, nothing grabs someone's attention more than a summons. Um, so if they're ignoring you, keep a paper trail of that. That's a good thing to have before you file a lawsuit, all your efforts to resolve it right. and be getting Absolutely. ignored. Judges don't like that. No. Judges don't like when people are cagey and don't no. answer questions or and just ignore, ignore. Ignore the other party yeah. just for, for years, months or years or whatever it is. Yeah. That's, that's a bad look when you're in the courtroom for yeah. the first time. And these cases where there's water that's collecting, God only knows what kind of damage it can do. I mean, people, right. maybe this person has homeowner's insurance that's going to cover whatever damage he's had, or or maybe not, or maybe all he really has to do is replace the, the dry well. But um, these kinds of cases, uh, I had one where there was a concrete block wall that was installed on the edge of a car dealership, and it went up during the dry season and then when it was starting to rain a guy who was the next door neighbor had built like this wooden structure in his backyard like a roller rink kind of thing right and he thought he had it on high enough ground but now it's suddenly collected in this gigantic pool against the wall and just started gushing in a river down one side of a hill down to his house and it was going to destroy his roller rink that he had built so he ended up calling a lawyer in a panic and saying, what can I do, what can I do? And he said, well, I guess you could smash a hole through the middle of the concrete wall. So he smashed a hole? Uh -huh. So the lawyer really did say, yes. well, that'll solve it. I yes. mean, there, he's being called for his legal advice, right. not for his uh, right. you know, advice on physics, but right. so did it work? It worked. Interesting, it good for out. him. Right.